Not a great football weekend, as has kind of come tradition around here uh, in South Louisiana. LSU loses in overtime, 16-13 to to Arkansas. Saints cannot get it done up in Nashville. They come up just a tad bit short. That's kind of been the story for both teams, but we'll stick with LSU here as we enter into the Ed Ogeron press conferences. So look back at the game against Arkansas and look forward to the non-conference game with the Louisiana Monroe Warhawks. I'll just kind of open things up for you, kind of your thoughts on what you saw on Saturday night. Let another one slip away. Um, I, I think uh, going into that game thinking, would the team fight? Would they battle? Would they show up? They did. Uh, and it was a, a heroic effort from the defense from start to finish. Obviously, I would love if we could tackle a quarterback, but <laughs> yeah. for the most part, I think they did a great job on defense. And offensive side of the ball, obviously, you got a freshman quarterback. First time playing in the SEC and playing in that, in that environment, uh, you expect mistakes, but you're right in it to the end of the game. It's just – for whatever reason, we just can't execute on offense consistently enough to really, you know, do what you need to do to win games. That was just a very disheartening way to lose a football game. Another phenomenal effort from a shorthanded defense. And uh, you look at the stat sheet, and and you would think LSU would win this game. Um, specifically, if you just look at Arkansas offensively, Hogs had a total of 281 yards. They ran it for 139, which is well below their season average, and it took them 40 carries. To get there, just three and a half per rush. They didn't really hit you with any any big plays, and it's not like they lit it up in the passing game either. Uh, they only threw for 142 yards. LSU was phenomenal on third downs on defense. They just put a stranglehold on Arkansas. They were three of 16 for 19 percent, um, and the average distance they had to go on third down was seven and a half yards. That's what we were talking about all week last week. Was can you get them? in third and distance situations where K.J. Jefferson's not necessarily as good. and you know, They got him in those situations, and they got off the field. They got back there um, and created some pressure with those blitz packages. Uh, Micah Baskerville had 12 tackles. Seven of them were solo. He had three TFL, three and a half TFLs in the game. I thought it was great. Uh, but you just don't have enough on the offensive side. And they decided to go with Max Johnson for the first two drives. You punt. And then it was Nussmeyer's show the rest of the way. And it sounded like that was kind of the plan they had. And our concern last week was he might might turn it over. And he tried to fit two balls in places where they didn't need to go. And he, he turned it over twice, including the, the one in overtime, which I think is just a really poor play design. It's a You're running a fade there to Devontae Lee. That's just not, not a high percentage play, not one of your best playmakers not creative it just wasn't very good and it ends up you know, costing you the game yeah i know this is an easy take to have but it really makes you wonder just how good this defense could be if we weren't mixing it up all year the yeah way we have been the past few weeks and um they they really played lights out and you you would think that just the way they played and being in that game especially in overtime when you get that huge third down um you'd be in a great position to, to take the lead and score a touchdown which we couldn't do and uh, I think Garrett, he he came out there and fought. Um, obviously, it was a, a ton of stuff they threw at him. Arkansas changed up their defensive strategy a ton from dropping eight most of the year to, yep. to really sending the house at them. And I think that's what you do to a young quarterback. And you saw him have some success and you saw him have some struggles. But uh, to be in that game at the end and still find a way to lose it, with your TDP getting 100 yards again, it's just, it's just a tough one, man, very tough couple of decisions that Ed Ogeron made that I didn't love. I talked about this on the postgame show. Um, in the first quarter with 6.16 to play, you would have had a 58-yard field goal attempt, and they decided not to kick it. And they punted, and that's the one where they tried to down it in there and ended up throwing it like 17 yards forward. But when you looked up at the flags in the Tiger Stadium, they were howling towards that south end zone. It was obviously very cold. The wind was coming out of the north, and it was headed down into the south end zone. That was not really a 58-yard field goal. It was more like a 48-yard field goal, and that is really in Cade York's range. If you're playing Alabama, and you're playing for the SEC West, and you're, okay, I get it. That's maybe a low percentage, low-ish percentage play. You're going to punt them, let your defense play out there. You got the best kicker in the country. I would have kicked the field goal there. Um they went for it on fourth and three with 558 left. It would have been from 55 yards. I know he came up short on the last 55 yarder. I don't think it was a a leg strength issue. I think he probably mishit the the one that he left short, which happens when you're kicking him from that long. 
there's another one that was a 50 yard yard 55 yard field goal you could have taken the lead there as opposed to go for it they they didn't get it and I don't know that either decision was wrong sometimes I'm comfortable when I see something go that's the wrong thing to do no it's you can see it either way but when you've got a kicker this good you might as well give it a shot and then, and trust me it's very easy to make the argument well he just tried from 55 and left it short so I'm not going to do that again I, I I hear you but I would I would have tried it yeah, I, I don't know how I feel about it. I, I think in a situation where you do have a freshman quarterback and you are going for it, you really just have thrown caution out yeah. through the wind to this point. Maybe you go for it. I think hindsight's twenty twenty now. We know um obviously he missed one and but I had an opportunity to drill another one, but I don't know. I, I think with this team, this program, <laughs> I think it, it, the way things are going, why not go for it? Yeah. Um it's just what we've been doing. It's where the program is, and Coach O really doesn't have much to lose at this point. So he's got to go for it. I think um, just losing Cam Wire too, that did not help no. in the game and having to rotate guys around and obviously going to a wildcat play when you're driving. It's just a lot of opportunities we had. We just kind of let slip away, and obviously the injury bug continued to bite again. Yep, for sure. Um, you mentioned that direct snap to TDP. You lost a turnover battle 3 to nothing, and that's going to that's gonna get you. Uh, and so, you know, had a chance. They played really hard. What do you think of Nussmeyer's um, first first real action? Yeah, I think it was about what I expected it to be. He made a couple plays, actually, um, just a little sideline, five-yard completion. Of, I think it was a Jack Besh, and it was a free rusher coming. He tried to scramble out to the right, spin back the other way, and still find a way to complete that pass. I think those type of plays is what got the coaches excited about him at quarterback. And well, the touchdown was that guy yeah, play. The, I mean, yeah, they're the coming in and he spins out and then just wings it. That's a guy taking a shot, and Besh wasn't necessarily open. Their guy was right back there, but he didn't turn around, and, and Jack made a great play on it. But that's that's the kind of playmaking ability that they, they've seen from him and that they like. But then the flip side of it is you, you throw a couple picks. Yeah, that's exactly what you expect. And I think for, for Garrett, I think just calming him down a little bit and getting him used to seeing those blitzes coming there. I would have loved to see some more screen plays with them blitzing so much. But the more he's in there, I think he'll he'll calm down a bit and just be smarter with the football because I think he does have more escapability with his legs, and, and that's what you're going to need with the offense. 